Yo guys, Insane Gamer 52 here, and today I'm going to show you how to play and easily beat the Nocturne Toten, Der Eisendrock, and RC Car arcade machines on the new map Forsaken. If you learned anything new in this video, a like rating is always appreciated. We're also getting close to a thousand subscribers, and I'll be running two giveaways when we hit that huge milestone, so feel free to subscribe if you want to see more in-depth guides in the future. If anything in this video changes, I'll try to keep it updated with a pinned comment down below. Alright, so the first thing you want to do is head to the arcade and the Anytown section of the map. You will need to lift the lockdown first, so make sure to follow the on-screen instructions for how to open up Pack-a-Punch. Once here, you will need an arcade token. Usually, you will need to kill zombies until one drops a token, but you can get one free token per game by just knifing this change machine. You can also buy an arcade token, but I wouldn't really recommend that since it costs 10,000 points to do so. Once you have a token, you can use it on one of the three working arcade machines. Alright, let's start with Noctur on Toten. You play on Noct by interacting with the World at War machine when you have an arcade token. You'll be teleported to the original spawn room of Nocturne on Toten and only have your fists and the 1911 pistol. To beat this game and get the maximum reward, you will need to kill three rounds of zombies within two and a half minutes. This sounds really easy, but you do have a limited amount of ammo and don't have any perks in this game even if you already bought them before entering. This is just while inside Noct. You will still have all your perks and guns when you finish the game. My recommendation is to knife all the zombies on round one to save your ammo for rounds two and three. The knife is a four hit kill on round one, but the spawns are slow enough that you should be able to kill all the zombies without a problem. You do have your skill tiers active during this game, so if you have your melee upgraded to tier 5, you will gain 15 health per melee, which is really useful. I'm pretty sure zombies are always a one-hit headshot, so upgrading your other weapon classes doesn't really matter. Once you finish round 1, you will get a small chest with some green salvage. For round 2, I suggest using your pistol and carefully aiming for headshots to preserve your ammo. Like I said, headshots are a one-hit kill, so you shouldn't have much trouble killing as long as you don't miss many shots. I find it easier to back up a little further from the zombies so they don't hit you and are a little easier to hit headshots on than if they're point blank. When you finish round 2, you'll get a medium chest with 50 blue salvage and a green DMR. This DMR only comes with 20 shots in it, but that should be enough to finish off round 3 as long as you don't miss too many shots. Fun fact, you will keep this DMR afterwards if you came in here with only one weapon and no secondary. For round 3, I suggest finishing off your pistol ammo then using the DMR to finish off the round. If you run out of ammo, you will have to finish it off by knifing, which could get difficult with the faster spawn rates and quicker zombies. Once you complete round 3, you'll get a large chest with 1000 essence, a full power, and 75 blue salvage. Note that even if you had death perception before entering this game, you won't get any bonus salvage since you don't technically have perks while playing. If you run out of time or die in the game, you will immediately exit the game and won't get any more rewards until you try again. This is the most fun game in my opinion, and you get 1000 essence and 125 blue salvage, so it has solid rewards too. The next game is Der Eisendrock. You play on DE by interacting with the Der Eisendrock pinball machine. This will teleport you to a platform away from the Forsaken facility and you'll see the Dragon Relic from Outbreak. You do get to keep your loadout for this one, so make sure that you're adequately upgraded for whatever round you're on. Just like Outbreak, you have to kill zombies within the purple circle to fuel the rocket and earn your reward. You can see your progress by looking at how full the tanks are on the side of the rocket. There isn't a stated time limit, but you can check how much time you have left by looking at the meter in the center of the rocket. Not a lot of people know this, but it's a timer that counts down until the rocket lifts off and you lock in your reward. You don't have to stay within the purple circle the whole time, but kills on zombies outside the circle won't count towards the dragon progress. When the time is up, the dragon will blast off and you get a chest based on how many zombies you killed within the circle. Full progress gives you a golden chest that will give you a full power, some salvage, equipment, a weapon, and a support streak. The final game is the RC car course. You play this by interacting with the Enduro arcade machine. There's no requirements for this one, you just have a minute to collect as much essence as you can. This sounds easy, but in my opinion, it's actually the most difficult game to beat. I've tried this six times and I've only actually gotten all the essence once. It takes a bit of practice, but here are my tips for beating this arcade machine. Start off by going across the two short ramps in front of you. Then go to the ramp to the right of where you spawned. Carefully line up and jump on the elevator crate leading up to the high platform. The platforms aren't much wider than the RC car, so being a little off will make a wheel go off the edge and you'll have to drop and start over. Wait for the platform to go all the way up and drive onto the raised platform. Don't jump or you could land with a wheel off the edge. You can drive across the moving platforms in front of you, but I found it easier to just jump across. Don't do a full jump though, try to do a little half speed jump so you don't overshoot your landing. If you make it, then carefully turn towards the pile of bonus points to your left and jump into them. I went onto the elevator platform, but I'm not sure you need to in order to get them. You may be able to do a boost and then jump without going on the elevator. Once you get all the essence in the map or the time runs out, you are exited from the game. This game can get you up to 5100 essence, which can be a huge help in any round. What do you guys think about these arcade games and about Forsaken in general? Personally, I think it's a solid map and these arcade games are a really fun addition with some solid rewards. I think Noct and the RC course are the most fun and have the best rewards depending on if you need salvage or points. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. If you found any part of this guide helpful, let me know by dropping a thumbs up. And feel free to subscribe for more in-depth guides in the future.
I stream on YouTube multiple times a week and post important zombies news on Twitter. Check the description below for all my socials. Alright, that's all I got. I'll see you guys next time.